So let's talk about the mass setup, what we're actually looking for here. So the way that we set up the, uh, the Luff curve in the main uh, is such that um, we've done a lot of experimenting on the, the actual sweep of the, uh, the spreaders and, um, and the length of the spreaders. So what we've determined in all that is that this, the spreaders, the range of spreaders is pretty long and we want to get them as short as possible and um, that there seems to be this optimum sweep angle measured and that's, this is just the number we came up with for, uh, for what the number should be. And, and you know, I, I think um, it's interesting. I bet you most people don't know what their spreader sweep is because there's a standard bracket. And they're probably pretty close, but it's, it's worth a check to make sure that you're in good shape there. All right, Delia? Now, this is one of my least favorite measurements in the tuning guide. When they ask you to measure the mass split position, um, I would say we spend 90% of our time when we set up a new boat or more on putting the mass butt in the spot we want it. And um, you know, I think at some point, to some degree this is an art because we've always tried to put it down to numbers. You know, if we get it here and this is what we got for pre-bend and, and then we go sailing and we're slow and then we move it around and we're a little faster. So we uh, do a lot of hunt and peck on this. This is the most critical measurement on a, on a J24 anyway. And it's all about that pre-bend, because it's a lever below the deck, and you're moving it back, you get more pre-bend. Um, but it's doing more than that. As you move it back, you get more headstay sag. So it's the interaction of that pre-bend and forestay sag that we spend all our time at. And uh, this is probably the part of the tuning guide I, I dislike the most. If you read the tuning guide, and this is straight out of the tuning guide, you measure from the third bolt from the, the top, crawl up in the bow, you put a tape measure to the front of the beam, mark it there, and then you measure back from that 130 millimeters, and that gets you started. Um, the, the, pro, the flaw with this method is that who's to say, you know, here we are, we're, we're measuring this mass butt to within an eighth of an inch. We've, we've already determined that an eighth of an inch makes a noticeable difference in the way the mass looks, the way the sail looks, and your, your result in speed. You can see it with your eye, one eighth inch difference in the mass butt. Well, who's to say that the fiberglass on this boat is not one inch inch thicker than the last boat? You know, who's to say? I'm sure it is. I'm sure they're not all made the same up there. Um, you know, there's so many different things. That angle could be just a little different. Uh, it could be a little further up or down, depending on what's going on. So that bolt could be off by, you know, by the time you do that measurement, you could be off by a half inch easy. And you know, if we're playing with an eighth of an inch, you're, you're in trouble. So I think I don't mind somebody doing this just to kind of get in the ballpark. But what we're going to talk about is, is the way we do it instead. So um, it is kind of nice to take a look at this, though. This, this picture, is, I know it's a little hard to see. I got that pointer somewhere. Um, here it is. If you look at, um, so this is your pre-bend, all right? And that is a combination of a lot of things, but one of the big things is this lever arm. By moving the mass butt back a little bit or forward, if you move it back, you make more pre-bend. You make it move forward, you make the mass straighter. Um, but as you move the mass butt forward, you're also tightening that force stay up. You're tightening as you move the mass butt forward. You're you're pulling the you know your your lever arm is pulling the mass tip back and making the force stay tighter, correct. All right, next. OK, so the way we do it is we set up at your, your base, we call base. So this is with your, your loose gauge set at, um, this is with your loose gauge set at that 2015. So just a, a good starting point. So 20 on the uppers, 15 on the lowers, and that's base. And then when we get done with that, with our careful measurement, so don't just use your eye. Somebody's either got to go up there or you put some kind of feeler on your spinner pole or something. We measure to two and a quarter inches of pre-bend. And that gets you really, really close. And, and when you move it an eighth of an inch, it's going to move a quarter inch or more at this pre-bend. So you'll be able to go from two and a quarter to two and a half with an eighth inch, eighth inch movement down here and to two inches with an eighth inch the other way. Go ahead. Oh yeah, uh, so the question was, uh, does it make a difference from one sail make it to the other? 
Um, and even within the same sailmaker, um, you know, hopefully the quality control is good. That and, and I've seen that with well, pretty much every sailmaker, is that you know people know the sailmaker knows how critical this is. So they don't, they're not off by a half inch on their left curve. You know, they're right on most of the time, unless they made an error. Um, but you know, a, a great example is the um, in the thistle we have two different cuts of mains. We have the quote unquote proctor cut, and we have the uh, the Fisher cut. So the Fisher cut is what I use. So Greg Fisher came up with this years ago, and, and he was a big guy. He loves pre-bend. He loves lots of pre-bend. And um, when, uh, so he cuts his sail with just lots of cloth in the left curve, whereas Chad Proctor, and they're both north sails, Chad Proctor likes a little more broad seam, and he likes a very straight luff. He doesn't cut hardly any, any left curve. So when I sail a thistle with a, um, with a Proctor main, I start off with a mast almost straight, you know, maybe a half inch of pre-bend or so. And uh, when I start when a, with a Fisher main, I start with, you know, maybe an inch and a half, two inches of pre-bend is my standard setting. So that's pretty radically different. And um, so that's just the way they cut the sails. So this is, this is very specific to both the Newport cut and the San Diego cut on the, on the main for, the, uh, for North. They're both looking for the same amount of pre-bend. Um, you know, there's other little differences in the sale. There's not much, but um, but for both of those sets, that does work. That amount of pre-bend works. Yes. So uh, the question was, um, how when I move the mass butt back and forth, what am I doing with the shrouds? Really, that's the question. With the, what? With the shrouds. So you, you have to start off, you know, because this pre-bend is a combination of the shroud tension and everything else. So what I, the way we do it is we start off with 2015 on the shrouds, and then we move the mass butt a little bit. Now, when you move the mass butt an eighth of an inch, it's going to change that the numbers on the on the shrouds a little bit too. So you're moving if so. Suppose we're at this amount of pre-bend, and we say, okay, we have we're at two and a half inches of pre-bend. We really want to get it to two and a quarter. So I move the mass butt forward maybe an eighth of an inch, and when I do that, it's going to get a little bit straighter. But when I get a little straighter, it's actually going to loosen the lowers just a little bit. So I go and I remeasure the mass. I remeasure, remeasure the uppers and lowers. And uh, usually, um, you know, just out of experience, I know that usually translates to one number. So if I was at 2015 before, the uppers are probably still pretty close to 20, but the lowers are probably 14. Because I move the mass butt forward just a little bit. So what I do is I just, you know, I put another turn or two on, half turn or two on, and remeasure them again, get them set to 2015 again, and then go remeasure the, um, the prevent. So that's a great question. So this is really the sweet spot, right? So this is your the spot where you're starting off and you always go back to. Uh, so the question was, do you ever move it? And um, uh, the, the short answer is yes, we do move it. And um, uh, we went through a period where we did and then we didn't. Um, I think you're going to be 99% there, 95% there if you never move it from that sweet spot. Um, <laughs> the, uh, there are exceptions, though, and, and we'll talk about that a little bit. But um, and I'll talk exactly why, but um, in heavy air, we actually move the mass butt forward a little bit. Uh, so that goes along with the question before, which we haven't answered yet, which is why, why are your lowers tighter than your uppers when it gets really, really windy? But it's for the very, very same reason. And uh, when we get to that little section, we'll, we'll talk about how much we move it and why. And, um, but like I said, it's a, it's a complicated thing. And usually, if it's windy like that, that's the last time you want to be trying to move your mass butt too. You know, by then it's, you know, it's blowing 25 and you know, we had to unroll, undo your rig so you can move your mass butt. You got somebody down there trying to move things around. So it's not an easy thing, um, but, um, but we do have it kind of set up so we can do it pretty quickly. And um, we, can, we can actually move our mass butt within, within about a minute now. So I don't know if everybody can see this very well, but if you have your, uh, your boat here, Right, and uh, you get your mast, a little bit of pre-bend in it. When you finally get that two and a quarter, what I'm looking for, once I get that 2.25 inch, and that's measured from the, the gooseneck to the top of the mast, there is a certain amount of force stay sag, and this is key. And you know, if you go up to it and you, you see it's out of range, you can move it a lot, you know it's you know, real lot, you know it's wrong. But what I do is I take the, I do take the aluminum one for this, and at that 2015, I set it so that when I pull it, it's so loose that it's off the gauge, and I can stick a couple of my fingers in there. 
So it's about an inch in between. So you're looking for about one inch showing. And do you guys know what I mean by, by between the loose gauge and the? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's not clear. And so on the aluminum loose gauge, the way it works is it's got this, this metal piece that kind of goes, it swings. It's got two metal, metal flaps that go like this. And as you pull it, you know, the tighter the shroud, the less this will have to be moved. And the more the whole thing bends if it's really loose. So they'll, it'll, on the aluminum one, if you put on the force stay, the force stay is so loose that when you pull it, the, uh, it's off the number scale. The number scale is like right in the middle of this microphone, but it'll go right past it. So when it's there, I, it, there should be about an inch of gap between the force stay and your loose gauge. I mean, sorry, between the loose gauge and the numbers at that point. You should always stick your fingers right in there. And that's, that's how you know you're right. So once you get here, this is kind of the balance you'll have. Suppose you get done and you have kind of zero inches showing. So your force stay is a little too tight. Well, then we actually move the, the mass butt a little further aft, trying to get a little more force stay sag. And that'll make it more like 2.5 inches, right? Set of your ideal two, and then maybe you get a half inch showing. And this becomes your magic because every boat's different. You know, you wish you could just set it up, and 2.25 inches always meant that one inch of sag. Um, but that doesn't work that way. Um, so what we end up doing is we just keep playing with these numbers, and we try to find the, the perfect balance. You could try to fake it with different shroud tensions, and we do a little of that too. So for example, if, um, you know, in this example, we get to the point where it's a little too tight for the amount of pre-bend, we might, we might just have on this boat, maybe, you know, if this boat's a little different, we might actually have slightly looser shrouds than we would on another boat. So, um, this is, so on our Italian boat, when we rigged that up the first time, we, we struggled with this because there's something geometrically different with that Italian boat. And the, when we got done with our 2.25 inches, we had like two and a half inches of this in here. It was that the force stay was just super loose. And uh, we'd go sailing and the thing would just be sagged so far to leeward. And, um, and this is when we, we started rethinking the fact that we just starting off with the, the pre-bend. We started thinking, we got to pay more attention to the force day sag. So we've been paying more attention to the force day sag. And um, so on this Italian boat, we, we do the opposite. We, first of all, I start off with moving the mass butt a little bit the other way. So I go a slightly straighter mass. So maybe I'm at two inches of pre-bend. So I can get this down to a manageable maybe one and a half inches, you know, so it's still a little looser than I'd like, but the mass is a little bit straighter than I'd like. And I, I tend to, to carry the, the shrouds tighter than I did on our old brain cramp, 1208. So 1208, we were always having our shrouds looser than everybody else, because I think it kind of had the opposite problem. And on this boat, we're, we tend to do the shrouds just a little bit tighter. Um, and, and this is the part that it's impossible to put into a tuning guide. How do you write all this into a tuning guide? And, um, and, and part of the problem is there's no right answer. We're still hunting and pecking, trying to find out exactly what's, what's right here. So um, it's something we're still struggling with. We, we're still trying to get it just right. Yeah? Do you measure your two and a quarter inches of pre-bend? Are you doing that at a specific height? Yes, we do it right at the spreaders. The, the question is, that when you're measuring this two and a half inches of pre-bend, we're always doing it exactly the same spot. And we do it from the back of the track to the front of the halyard. When it's tied from the top, you know, main halyard comes down right to the gooseneck, and it's tied tight against the gooseneck, and it's uh, right from the back because the halyard actually has, you know, it's pretty thick. You know, it's half inch thick or something, or three eighths, I think it is. So, I mean, that's more than a quarter inch right there. So you don't want to get that wrong. So you do it from the back of the front of the halyard to the back of the mast track, and it's always right at the spreader, so You're always measuring from exactly the same spot. Two and a quarter is critical. The question was, is the two and a quarter critical because of the, the left curve? And how we, we talked about how critical that was the whole time. That's exactly what you're starting off with. So what happens is if it gets a little lighter, base, the base setting is actually not the lightest setting. It's 2015. Our lower setting is, is more like 1510. So in lighter, it actually will straighten out. And we'll get, um, we'll get more, more shape. And then heavier, we want to straighten it out. I'm sorry, in, um, in lighter, we straighten it out to get more shape. And in heavier, it actually bends more to pull that left curve out. 